Hi everyone, Carl Steele here with what is probably the last video of the semester for English 3111, Fall 2022 Medieval English Literature at Brooklyn College, talking about a tradition that is so vast that I can't cover it at all comprehensively in this little talk. This is the Dance of Death tradition, which is well represented in poetry, written in Spanish and German in French, in English, probably in Latin, and probably many other languages, and also in visual media, wall hangings, murals, manuscripts, little sculptures, and so on. So for example, here's from a book of hours produced in Paris between 1430 and 1435, which is here in New York at the Morgan Library. You can look at the whole thing online, or if you want to try, you might even be able to see it in person. Here is a cleric of some sort, being led away by death. And one thing you'll notice is how kind of stiff and formal the cleric is and how lively death is. Death seems to have all the life in this and the cleric seems to be, well, robotically going along with his job. And we can talk about that more in class tomorrow. But now to introduce the tradition to you a little bit. Over here on the left, we have another representation of the Dance of Death. This is in France at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, a manuscript called Rothschild 2535 from its folio uh, 108 on the reverse side. So you see death here with a cardinal, looked known by its red, his red hat. We have, I believe this is an emperor down here, also being led away by death. There is the Pope being led away by death with a coffin over its shoulder, there's a king, there is probably a merchant of some sort and his wife and some kind of peasant over here. And there's a little baby in a cradle also being led away by death. And then here is a dead body stretched out on a shroud while monks are praying probably the office of the dead over them. So this dance of death tradition, well, um, Again, it's dancing. It develops out of something called the Ars Moriendi tradition, the learn to die tradition, which is a, a set of religious writing and sermon material that teaches people to understand the various signs of approaching death and how to prepare their spirits to meet God, to ensure that people die not damned in their sins, but rather turning themselves towards grace. It's about learning how to die well by having death always in mind. Uh, it also is a tradition that develops out of conversation in debate poetry. So it's body and soul is one of the forms of this. We also saw the body in the worms debating. And here it is where death is coming to meet various people and having brief conversations with them. And in all cases saying, join in the dance. It is also thematically relation, related to something we've talked about in class called the Fortune's Wheel, the Wheel of Fortune, the Rota Fortuna, which is that notion that everybody who is in a state of happiness is eventually going to end up in a state of unhappiness. The wheel is always turning. Do not be comfortable where you are because this is a case, especially in the case of the emperor, cardinals, the pope, the king, and so on, that death will bring you low. No matter how happy and wealthy and powerful you are, death will come for you as well. It is also part of a larger tradition in the late Middle Ages of what's called estates satire, where you get these point by point depictions of all the various kinds of people in society. Sometimes it might strike you as rather obsessively focused on the various particular ranks of various religious figures, different kinds of clerics, monks, cardinals, hermits, anchors, priests, and so on. But um, this is the case in the Dance of Death material as well. We do have a very particular set of ranking and jobs of church officials, and it's a little fuzzier, I think, when it comes to secular people, particularly when it comes to women, although there is a Spanish Dance of Death, which is just women. Um, and then the dance itself, well, we may have a 13th century version, but the earliest attested reference to it is from 1376, and it we probably have this stuff going on well into the 17th century. So it, it exceeds the Middle Ages. And we can talk in more detail towards the end of this talk about why it's a dance and what that means. Um, people will argue often that this tradition is associated with 
the bubonic plague, the Black Plague, which hits Europe in the mid 14th century and again kills off a third of the population, just as it did in Central Asia, just as it did in China, um, and also associated with vast amounts of war. I think unless we can establish that there is a similar dance of death tradition and obsession with death in Central Asian and Chinese art from this period, I don't think that argument quite works. I think there is a particular attention to dying well in late medieval Christianity, which might be independent of the enormous mortality from disease. So it is an open question really, whether or not COVID is gonna produce a particular kind of art in our culture. I'm a little dubious. We didn't see that much uh, representation in art either of the great flu epidemic of 1919. The 1920s do not really known as a time of flu art. So we can talk about this more in class. At any rate, I'm dubious about this, those historical arguments. At the top of the slide, you see a dance of death mural dating from the 15th century, which is in Bretagne or Brittany, which is now part of France. It's a small town called Plua, and it's the chapel of Camaria on a squeet. Um, so you can see death leading various notable figures along to their inevitable end. And down here, I have a few stanzas from one of John Lydgate's two versions of this poem. The earliest version is that John Lydgate visited Paris, went to the Church of the Holy Innocents, saw the dance of death painted on the walls along with poetry in French, and then translated that into English. And this is the version we're looking at in class. And I will read you a few stanzas and talk about what's happening poetically. Death to the Cardinal. Ye benabation it seemeth, and in dread, Sir Cardinal, it sheweth be your chair, but it for thee you follow shul and dead, with other folk me down sport to lair. Your great away, all shall be leaven here, your hat of raid, your vesture of great cost. All these things reckoned well ye fear, and great honour, good avis is lost. The Cardinal answereth, Ye have great cause, certes, this is no fail, the benabation, and greatly dread may, sith and death is come may suddenly to assail, that he shall never hereafter clothed be, and grease ne ermine leek to me de grey, me hat of read, leave eek in distress, be which ye have learned well and say, who that all joy endeth in heavy nessa. So to talk about some of the features of the Middle English, uh, well, the glosses here, which are by the editors of this poem, Megan Cook and Elisabetta Strakoff, are pretty handy. And we can add to this with something like this. Ye ben abashed, ye ben abashed, you are perplexed for to lair, to learn. And this bit down here that has the number four, each and every one of these valuable things adjudicated together, rather a complicated line. Over here, uh, that I, that E shall never hereafter clothed be, so that I, it's a causal phrase, and that word ache, ache, the ache, ache is that phrase meaning also, like the German auch. So to translate this, death to the cardinal. You are perplexed, it seems, and full of dread, sir cardinal, it shows by your expression. But you shall follow forth in death with the other folks to learn my dance. Your fine array shall all be left here. Your red ecclesiastical hat, your garment of great cost, each and every one of these valuable things adjudicated together for in great honor, good judgment is lost. The Cardinal answers, I have great cause. Certainly this is no mistake to be perplexed and to have great dread since death has come upon me so suddenly to attack me. And so I will not hereafter be clothed in gray fur or ermine according to my status. My red hat I shall also leave behind in distress, by which I have learned well and see how all joy ends in heaviness. What's really striking to me here is both that death singles out the cardinal as an individual and gradually strips him of his individuality. This is what death does. It reduces everybody, no matter who they are, to one particular status, that of being a corpse. And so we see the gradual de-individualization of the cardinal happening over these two stanzas, just as we will see this happen throughout the poem with every particular individual. So it's a poem that marks people as individuals while stripping them of their individuality. 
quite frightening in that regard. What's also striking to me in a very particular poetic way is these two phrases, it seems and it shows. We can talk more about this in class, so it's really striking to me about that is the impersonal third person. What is doing the seeming? What is doing the showing? It has to do with the aspect of the cardinal. What is he appearing? How is he appearing to death? But he's doing it in a way that seems impersonal, seems to be out of his control, out of his reason, out of his consciousness. The it seems and it shows as something that his body is doing. In that regard, the kind of unconscious quality of bodily expression, I think, is analogous to the way that death also overtakes us. Down here at the bottom of the page, we have the Dance of Death alphabet by the great artist Hans Holbein, which he produced around 1523. Um, you can view this entire thing online in lots of places. You can even buy a book which produces each one of the letters individually. They're delightful to look at and also a little terrifying, of course, here is an infant being taken out of its cradle. So over here, death speaks to the lady. Death to the lady of great estate, come forth anon, mi lady, in princess. You must also go upon this dance. Nut me avail your great strangenessa, neither your beauté, ne your great plaisance, your rich array, ne your dalliance, that sometime could so many hold on hond. In love for all your double variants, ye moot is new this footing, understand. The lady answers. Alas, I see there is no other boat. Death hath an earth, no lady ne maestress. And on this dance, yet musty ne this foot, for there is quaint contest ne duchess, bluring in beauty, ne in fairness, the che of death must death is truss, so. For to your beauty, in counterfeit freshness, where rumpled age saith farewell, adieu. Okay, so some of the features in Middle English. This little bit here, this last line, is a little bit under unclear perhaps but footing has to do with dance boot there is no other boot boot in this case means relief um, bootless means it's hopeless we can sometimes encounter that in modern english yet must he need his foot i still i have to dance nis is a portmanteau it's two kind of words smushed together not and is smushed together to make nis so it means is not so to translate this Death to the lady of great estate, come forth immediately at once. That's what that anon means. Come forth immediately, my lady and princess. You must also go upon this dance. There is no help that will come to you from your great haughtiness, neither your beauty nor your great charm, your rich clothes nor your flirting that sometimes could hold so many in your sway, in love with you for all of your duplicity. You might you must now understand or learn this dance. The lady answers, alas, I see there is no other remedy. Death hath on earth no lady nor a mistress. So on this dance, I must dance. Basically, I have to put my foot. There is no queen, countess, nor duchess, flowering, flourishing in beauty, nor in fairness, except that she must learn, must learn to see death's dance for to your as regards to your beauty and counterfeit youthfulness our rumpled age says farewell goodbye so you can talk we'll talk in class more about what's happening in terms of the gender politics of this i want you to note poetically that uh, the stanzas tend to end with a moral. Lydgate wraps it up he's getting this from the french original but what's striking to me here is that while the cardinal is addressed in terms of his clothes and in terms of his worldly power, the woman is addressed in terms of her body primarily. And the woman learns to address other women, to turn around and address herself to other women and to turn this lesson that she's turned against herself to other women and say, you must learn from me that age will come for us and that age and death are sort of thought of as equivalent for a woman. And we can talk more in class about what's going on with that. So 
There's so much more to say about this, and we'll talk about it in Monday's class and Wednesday's class, but I want to talk briefly now about uh, Cedar Giganti's excellent book, Strange Footing, Poetic Form and Dance in the Late Middle Ages, which came out from the University of Chicago Press in 2018. Giganti joins other critics like Elena Gerritsman in her 2010 book, The Dance of Death in the Middle Ages, in taking the dance and the dance of death seriously as dance, not just as a metaphor, but as something that involves bodies moving around in space. Um, she does this, Giganti does, by looking at a 1979 dance performance called, well, Dance by Lucinda Childs, and I'll show you an excerpt from that on the next and final slide. And one thing that Chikanti does is she talks about the way that this Dance of Death uh, material is often uh, would have been encountered as murals, as paintings on walls. And so what does it mean for you as a person to enter this chapel and to walk along that mural, to trace it, to join in the dance, so to speak, as you're moving horizontally, following it, as you're looking up and down, following it, as your eyes are enabled sometimes by the light coming through the windows, and sometimes interrupted by the shadow coming in between the windows, and by the various columns and so on that are dividing the various panels of the painting from one another. This is a very complicated set of material to keep in mind in terms of space, in terms of time, horizontal, horizontality, verticality, uh, light, and darkness. And so the question that Giganti asks is basically this, how do we participate in this? What does it do to us as embodied beings? And again, I recommend looking at the book for a full account of what it is she's talking about. Some of the things that interest me with this is that when we dance, what is dancing? Uh, especially when we're talking about partner dancing, highly choreographed partner dancing. This is not something you're doing as an individual choice. It's something you're doing collaboratively with the person across from you according to steps that you both have learned in advance. And so this is the kind of dance that death is leading these medieval people in when death grabs hold of them and is saying, you're going to learn the dance. And so this is not an individual choice, right? It's not you dancing alone in your room to music. It is you joining with someone else and learning a dance that you didn't know before and maybe that you didn't want to learn. So think about that. Um, but also even this, when you are dancing alone in your room, uh, is that dance actually self-expression? We are in some ways not dancing ourselves, we are dancing the music. We are the music's instrument and it's an additional element in it that is a physical element. And again, I want you to think about the kind of highly embodied and slightly impersonal an even selfless quality of dance and how that enables us, us to think about how death is working in this dance of death material. I'm gonna leave you with this excerpt from Lucinda Child's Dance, a 1979 piece. This is from a 2011 performance of the Barbican in London. The artist Saul DeWitt did the decor. The music is obviously by Philip Glass and the film with the giant dancers is original to the 1979 performance. This piece is very important to Cedar Giganti. It is one of the ways that she conceptualizes how the dance of death is working in the Middle Ages. And so I'd like you to watch this if possible and we can talk about this more in class. So I'll leave you with this.